Today, I'll be showing you how to make this logo. So before this video starts, you'll need Cinema 4D. These are my composition settings. Okay, now what we're gonna do is import our pictures. So I have this cross. This is actually a logo for someone else. So since this is dark, we're gonna add some fill to it. Search up here for fill. I'm gonna add that right on top of this. We're gonna change the color to silver. Cut this down some, so I just do it around two or three seconds. And then we're gonna press delete. I actually have another picture. Um, this idea is kind of like crazy. So we're actually gonna mask this out. So just click this pen tool if you're masking something like a picture out. We now have our hand set. Wait, this is actually gonna look so good. Okay, now we're gonna make a new solid layer. And what this is gonna do is give us a 3D. Um, so we're gonna right click this box and then press new shape layer we're gonna drag this under this and then we can just um click the eyeball tool make sure you make a mask on the shape layer once you have both of your shapes masked out and then what we're gonna do kind of like no layers we're gonna drag the shape to the thing and then we're gonna drag this shape to this one we can't make this actual part 3d so what we need to do is click this go over there and then click geometry options and then you're gonna change the extrusion depth <laughs> to like 30. Once we move this one again, boom. You can see it's 3D. Same thing for the other one. What we're gonna do is actually duplicate this because I want the hands on both sides, so. Click one of them, hold shift, click the other one, and then we're gonna press Control D to duplicate. A few moments later. We're gonna focus on these bottom two real quick. Press the stopwatch and then press R. And then we're gonna just click all these because why not? Then position, just in case we need to use that. Forward a few frames, and then we're going to select all these, and then we're going to move them over here. And then we're going to go near the beginning again. I kind of want to make it bounce in. Boom. It comes in like this. Um, I don't really know how to do that, but we're going to figure it out. Think of it as a bouncy shape. Use physics. Um, so it's going to go right here. And then it's going to go... It's going to go down a little bit. And it's going to go back up a little bit again. Go back to zero. Okay, so this is kind of trash, but it's whatever. We're just gonna highlight all these and then we're gonna right click one of them, key for assistant, and easy ease them. And let's see how this looks. It's not horrible, but this like one part is like really laggy. It's ugly, so I'm gonna delete this one and see how it looks. Oh! I finished doing both of the hands, but I'm going to add the last part that I'm like animating for real. That's trim path. So trim paths are the lines that you see on logo. It's actually kind of simple. So what we have to do is create another shape layer actually. And then we're gonna press the shape layer. You see this fill button? We're gonna press this, click this. And we have to make a mask. So change this to ellipse tool. And then we're gonna do something like that. And then you're gonna hold shift so it's a perfect circle. Press shift, control, alt, home. And then you're gonna press control, home. And then that's gonna center the anchor point in the circle. What we have to do is create a trim path. So you're gonna press add. And then you're gonna press add trim path. And then boom. You see where it says start? We're gonna put this up some actually. Make sure it's at 100. Make a keyframe. And then we're gonna change it to zero. Go back a little bit. And then you're gonna press end. And then we're gonna go forward past this point right here. Put it to zero. So it should look something like this. Sorry if it's a little confusing. And then we can just add a graph if we want. Um, and then yeah, make it 3D. And then we're gonna go under geometry options and change the extrusion depth to whatever you want. So we're gonna add our shiny look. So what we have to do is press Control I, and then I'm gonna have an environment. It's called Lobby, actually. So we're gonna add motion tiles. So search up motion tile, and then we're gonna add this on here. And then we're gonna change the output width to 300, and we're gonna change the output height to 300. Add the mirror edges, and then we can copy this. Press Control C, press S on our keyboard on this part, and then we're gonna scale this down until you see it. 
add saturation to that. And I'm just gonna make it black and white so then we don't got have that color in it. Pre-compose it, press Control V of our motion tile that we copied and then we're gonna press S again and scale this out. This will make it even more shiny. Right click it and then we're gonna press environment layer. What you have to do is go into the material option so press like the thing and then you're gonna press material options. Then you're gonna press reflection intensity and you're gonna change that like to like 70 or something or 80. And then as you can see, it starts to get glossy. I'm just gonna add a light real quick. Oh, there's a lot of layers guys. Press layer, new, and then light. And then I'm gonna have to spotlight. Okay, and now for the last layer, until we pre-compose for real, we're gonna add an adjustment layer. So press layer, new, and then adjustment layer. What we're gonna add to this is force motion blur. And this is gonna add like the motion blur that we need to make this like not give cap cut. You see force motion blur, add that to the adjustment layer. It should be good to go. And we're just gonna pre-compose all of this. Let's duplicate this layer, and then we're gonna add deep flow to it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe out there, guys. I love you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.